evolution and classification. All living things are grouped into different categories on the basis of their body design. As time passes, certain characteristics begin to influence the body design. Once this body design comes into existence, changes begin to occur in it, which in turn bring out new changes. This means that the characteristics which came into existence earlier are likely to be more primitive than those which arise later. In other words, classification is closely related to evolution. Most of the organisms have arisen by an accumulation of changes in their body design. The organisms which possess these favorable changes survive better in the long run. In 1859, Charles Darwin first described this concept of evolution in his book, The Origin of Species. There are certain groups of organisms that have ancient body designs and are referred to as primitive or lower organisms. While some organisms have acquired their body designs relatively recently and are called advanced or higher organisms. However, these terms do not clearly reflect the evolution of these organisms and hence we often refer to them as older and younger organisms respectively. There is a strong possibility that complexity within the organisms increases with increase in the evolutionary time. Hence, we can say that older organisms are simpler while younger organisms are more complex. Depending on these different characteristics, a hierarchy is developed that allows us to make classification groups. Thus, different groups can be developed as a small group of species with advanced ancestors, then supergroups of these groups with more distant common ancestors and so on. If in the same way the hierarchy is followed, we can reach to the beginning of the evolutionary time, thereby proving that at some point in the history of the earth, non-living material might have given rise to life. Tracing Evolutionary Relationships Several biological studies have suggested that right from their origin, living organisms have been undergoing changes in their organization to evolve into new forms. A number of common features of different organisms provide an evidence in favor of evolution. The more characteristics two species have in common, the more closely related they are. The more closely they are related, the more recently they will have had a common ancestor. The characteristics that accumulate in a particular generation can be used to trace the evolutionary history. Molecular phylogeny is the technique used to estimate and analyze evolutionary relationships at the DNA level. The idea is that organisms which are more distantly related will accumulate a greater number of differences in their DNA. One of the most important evidence of the evolutionary relationship is provided by the anatomy of certain organisms. Anatomical evidence Anatomical evidence of evolution is usually reflected in the form of structures which appear quite similar in their organization. For example, a human arm, a bull's leg, a bat's wing and a whale's fin are different body organs which are not similar to one another. Their functions are also quite different. The human
human arm is used for making different movements such as picking up a book, throwing a ball, etc. A bull uses its leg for activities such as walking, running, etc. A bat uses its wings for flying, while a whale uses its fin for swimming. Due to the differences in their functions, they show a difference in their external structural morphology. But when we observe the internal structure of bones of these different organs, we can see certain similarities. This similarity exists between the arrangement of bones and the joints. Such similarities suggest that these animals are the descendants of a common ancestor. Different organisms have different organs which are fundamentally same in structure but are modified to perform different functions in different organisms are called homologous organs. For example, the four limbs of man are adapted for handling while the four limbs of bat are adapted for flying and those of aquatic animals and whales are adapted for swimming. All these organs of different animals show the same underlying composition of the skeleton. In plants, the scales of ovulate or female cone of pine correspond with the carpels of a flower of higher plants. The scales of the staminate or male cone of pines correspond with the stamens of a flower. The homologous organs show similarities due to the fact that the process of evolution results in modification of the existing structures. These modified structures perform new modified functions. Fossils Have you ever heard of fossils? Do you know what are they? Let us try to find out. Fossils are the preserved remains or traces of animals, plants and other organisms from the remote past. Fossils are formed by a continuous process of burying and decomposition over a period of time. The hard parts of the body like skeleton, shell, teeth and occasionally the entire animal are found embedded in the sediments. These sediments form the rocks. Paleontology is a branch of science which involves the study of fossils of plants and animals found in the sedimentary rocks. The process of fossilization is a long-term process. As rocks exist in the deeper layers of land, the land needs to be excavated in order to study the fossils. Fossils can be collected from different layers of rocks found at different depths. The occurrence of these fossils and their systematic study indicated that Fossils of invertebrates are situated at the deepest level. A layer above them were found the prehistoric fish-like animals above which were the amphibians. The reptiles and the birds as well as mammals were found to be in the uppermost layer. This record suggests that the simple life forms are found in the lower or the old strata while the complex forms appear in the upper or recent strata of the earth. Do you know how? Paleontological evidence suggests that invertebrates came into existence before the vertebrates. The fossils of invertebrate animals are found in the deepest layers of the rocks, whereas fossils of vertebrates, namely the birds and mammals, are found in the recent layers of rocks. This paleontological evidence suggests that Invertebrates came into existence before the vertebrates and reflects the order in which these animals appeared on the earth. There are two different methods by which we can estimate the age of fossils. If we dig into the earth, we find that the fossils closer to the surface are more recent as compared to the fossils found in the deeper layers. The age of the fossils can be estimated by carbon dating method. When living organisms change into fossils, 
that C14, carbon-14 radioactive, decreases slowly. Thus, the age of fossil can be determined with the help of the C14 radioactive. The age of ammonite, trilobite and dinosaur is determined by this process. Evolution by stages There are enormous number of plants and animals found on the planet Earth. How has this great variety of organisms evolved? Well, the organisms which existed on the Earth initially were quite different from the ones present now. They have modified themselves in response to their environment. These changes have occurred gradually in stages and have resulted into the evolution of a new species. The occurrence of different stages of evolution in a species is not because of a single DNA change. Let us understand this concept with the help of an example of evolution of eyes and that of feathers in the organisms. Evolution of eyes. The eye is an example of a homologous organ. It is a complex organ. It has been created in stages over generations. The primitive organisms which existed on the earth were slow moving and smaller in size. They did not require any specialized organ for observing any object. Consider the example of flatworms. Flatworms are small invertebrates. The eyes of flatworms are simple and exist in the form of eye spots. Eye spots are light sensitive cells which can detect light. As evolution progressed, comparatively large and mobile organisms were evolved. Most of them were predators and required a better vision for the purpose of predation. Hence, from the basic design of eyes, more and more complex forms were evolved. Insects, octopus, invertebrates all have eyes. However, the structure of eyes differs in each of these organisms. This suggests that they have separate evolutionary origin. The evolution of eyes, therefore, is an example of evolution by stages. Evolution of feathers You must have seen a bird making use of its feathers for the purpose of flying. But the feathers were not evolved for the purpose of flight. They were evolved as a means of providing insulation to their bodies in cold weather. Scientists have found out the fossils of some dinosaurs that had feathers for insulation against cold weather. Since the dinosaurs were reptiles, it implies that birds have evolved from reptiles. Thus, it can be said that a property which is useful for few species at a period of time can be used later for quite a different function in different species. Does the influence of man have any effect on the evolution of a species? Yes, artificial selection is the process in which human preferences have a significant effect on the evolution of a particular species. For example, as observed in the case of wild cabbage, humans cultivate wild cabbage as a source of food and have produced different varieties from it by means of artificial selection. Common vegetables such as cabbage, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, Kohlrabi are the descendants of wild cabbage.
cabbage was produced by selecting for a short petiole. Broccoli was developed by selecting the rest and flower development of wild cabbage. Another variety, known as cauliflower, was developed by selecting sterile flowers in the wild cabbage plant. Selection of the swollen parts of wild cabbage led to the evolution of yet another variety known as kohlrabi. Similarly, kale was developed by selecting large leaves. Artificial selection has helped in creating diversity in plants and animals. In agriculture, superior strains of corn, wheat and soya bean have resulted from the process of artificial selection. Let's do a quick check. Human evolution 
has been studied by using some tools like digging earth, time dating, studying fossils, and determining DNA sequence for tracing evolutionary relationship. The future of human is stable, vast, and full of diversities. There is a great diversity of human forms and features across the earth. Man thought for a long time about different races of human. The human race was identified on the commonest way of their skin color such as yellow, black, white or brown. It is now known that the human races have not evolved differently. In the recent years, the evidence has become very clear that all the human beings are of a single species called Homo sapiens. By research, it has been established that we have come into existence only a few thousand years ago. We all have come from Africa. Our genetic footprints can be traced back to our African roots. A couple of hundred thousand years ago, some of our ancestors left Africa while others stayed back. Those who left Africa slowly spread over the planet from Africa to West Asia, Central Asia, Eurasia, South Asia and East Asia. They migrated down the island of Indonesia and the Philippines to Australia and reached America. They went in groups, sometimes separated from each other and mixed with each other and even moved in and out of Africa. Like all other species on the earth, they had come into being as accident of evolution. Let's do a quick check.